everyone, it's Matt here, and welcome to episode 5 of Bricking It. This episode is called Central Terminal, and it's basically, as you might expect from me with all the trains, it's essentially a giant railroad station. The origins of it actually lie in uh, VHS tapes um, back many years, if not a dec decade plus ago. Um, my dad actually received a video about Grand Central Terminal from the New York Central Railroad uh, in New York. Um, and while he wasn't that interested, I was and watched it repeatedly for at least, I've watched it at least 10 times over the years. Um, I don't think we've got it anymore, I think we got rid of it, but it was a um, nice video to watch, um, etc. And part of that has actually stayed with me, and it's possibly that video that's actually started me off trying to model um, sort of American trains and that sort of thing. So obviously Grand Central's not alone in being a nice big station um, and you know if you just do a quick uh, look on the any internet search engine for you know railroad terminal you'll find several. Um, and another one that I've since found fairly recently that I've quite liked is one called Buffalo Central Terminal. It's no longer an actual station anymore it's actually um, partly preserved um, and it still has all the uh, sort of platforms and most of the stuff and all the details and everything else um, but it doesn't serve trains anymore. In actual fact part of the station has been taken out um, to actually help trains because uh, obviously more modern intermodal trains with double stack containers um, would actually have found the original uh, passenger footbridge uh, so that's actually been taken off so it's a bit sad but you know, at least the main building standing and all the other bits, of, or a good portion of the other bits standing on it. Um, but obviously some bits have been dismantled since. Other terminals, um, when I had a quick Google, included uh, Atlanta and Jersey City slash Communipore Terminal. And I think the la that latter one is in New York as well. I think it was for the Central Railroad in New Jersey. And again, like a lot of these, it's a very big, uh, with these terminuses, they're very big, uh, train sheds, you know, full of ironwork and glass, very light and airy structures, very heavy in terms of physical weight, but very light and airy in that they let quite a lot of light in. There's quite a lot of air, you know. There's a definite sort of, there's a grandeur uh, to them as well. So, turning to the Lego version, is that the reason I want to build it is it's a bit of a centerpiece, if you like. It's a unique building in some respects and that it's a unification of both the railroad on one hand and city on the other so it's a nice sort of crossover between the two and it sort of ties the two together in a very similar way to a level crossing uh, perhaps a rail served industry and that sort of thing actually ties together both the city and the railroad together but a station is just that something with gravitas and it's something that instantly draws attention to it either through size, the fact you've got trains stopping in there to let offload and load passengers, or to let other trains uh, cross over if it's a single track or, you know, you've got multiple trains. And it's a lay-by point for that. Um, and the reason I wanted to build a station in LEGO is because, well, especially something like this, is because, for, especially for LEGO and sort of in, in, in some instances, model railroading terms, you can build something which is still on the small side, to be relatable and easily buildable and manageable and that sort of thing but with the size and gravitas to sort of draw attention draw the wow factor if you like and you know make it that little bit extra you know special when you see it it's not just a little you know country station on the edge of town it's a nice big draw and a lot of people will want to see it want to take photos and if you make it nice and detailed and possibly with removable roofs and that sort of thing people can really get into the detail and in some respects, it can always be a bit of a history lesson, sort of see, this is how a station would operate, you know, you've got this here and that there and so forth. Um, so, part of the uh, research, obviously, if you're going to build something like this, is a bit of detail about how it's, like, the colours used in it. Um, so, I've just sort of decided on using uh, uh, mostly uh, tan, uh, light and dark bluish grey um, and white. And those colours are fairly basic colours. They're fairly plain colours, but they're bright colours, if you like, with the exception of the dark bluish grey. 
And the reason why dark blue grey is in there, in that mix of four colours, is actually because the um, train shed is using the very common technique of actually using the curved track sections as the actual sort of like ironwork to sort of spread it out a bit. And that gives it not only a very nice curvature, it also gives it a very uh, sort of stated thing. And it's a neat sort of inception thing where you've got track in a station and it's not, you know, it's on its side. You know, it makes it look really nice and it's a really nice feature um, and honestly uh, part of this is that I've bought a modular builder called the brick bank and I'm actually going to use that as part of a as a, in a sense a parts pack and I can use that to uh, build some of the side buildings and do all sorts of stuff and use it for detailing and a lot of the parts in the brick bank can actually be used in the terminus build I'm going to build um, either as part of the main structural part of the detailing, uh, part of the internal buildings um, or walls and that sort of thing. So it's a really good um, set for that. So now I'm going to go through each section. Um, so, and I'm going to go through these in a combination of pictures and um, actual, uh, like an image for sort of a planogram. So the first thing we've got to go through obviously is the uh, terminal art shed or the train shed as some people call it. Um, Obviously, it doesn't actually have trains, and I've already mentioned it has curved track. Um, and you know, it is the sort of like if aside from some of the other features I'll come on to, it is actually sort of like the defining feature of a station. You know, it's the big sort of imposing we're here and we're a station sort of ethos to it. Um, and some of the details of these stations vary quite a lot, some are open ended. Uh, especially for sort of trains, a lot of them are closed off above a certain height to help protect against weather and help protect the passengers um, and that sort of thing. This, because this is a bit station building that doesn't actually serve trains, obviously those things about having it over to the elements are moot effectively. Um, obviously there might be some for opening spaces for ventilation and obviously you've got the way in and out of the station but in terms of station building it's more akin to Grand Central Terminal in New York than maybe say I don't know Community Port Terminus where or some, one of the um, London stations in England uh, where they've got an open end because obviously trains are coming in and out and you need that ventilation space so it's an enclosed uh, section if you like and one of the things I'm going to pick up is that I'm going to be copying uh, Grand Central Terminus for the having an end wall but having nice big windows into let light in also there's going to be light in the ceiling because um, it's obviously got that very nice curvature and I can use that for lighting as uh, sort of like letting natural light in but the big end windows I can use stained glass uh, do a lot of stained glass techniques and that sort of thing to actually sort of pick it out and make it look really nice um, and do stuff that way. Obviously, as a station, it's got to ha uh, got to have a big sort of like defining feature. And the next one of those is actually the clock tower. The clock tower is actually going to be a fairly big, fairly sizable structure, not only in its footprint, in sort of like the length and width, but also in the height. Um, I'm aiming to have the clock tower bigger than the train sort of like the uh, sort of like train shed itself so it's actually going to and the plan is is to have enough floors so that the sort of like the base layer just before the clock so obviously you have the main tower and then you have the clock layer the clock layer is going to be just above the terminal roof line possibly slightly higher and obviously that has you know clock face on every side and that gives it a really big you sort of like focus points if you like and everybody can see it and it'll stand above pretty much everything else around it and it'll also mean that if you build it big enough I can also fit in a proper working mechanism in it so this means that it'll grab a bit of attention um, and it will sort of like people can sort of go oh it's a working clock you know and that sort of thing and you know it's another feature it adds a bit of activity to an otherwise static scene you know and it's a you know an interesting technique to do um, and obviously, as a clock tower, a clock tower having a working one is a bit of a might be a bit of a hard one to do. But certainly, as a clock tower, we can have a clock on all four sides, you know, and it can work out quite well that way. Um, now obviously, in terms of stations, you've obviously got to have a few other bits and pieces. So obviously, we've got the train shed and clock tower. 
but then you've also got to have things such as um, an admin block or ticket booth section. So that so so it's sort of like the day to day running of the railway and the management of the rail railway railroad, I should say. Um, so obviously, as a ticket office, you're serving customers with the information, with tickets, possibly with season passes or regular regular or return tickets. And they also got the admin side as well, so reservations for trains, you know, and the day-to-day -day management of the stations, sort of like deliveries and that sort of thing. Um, and for the admin block, um, you know, I'm going to go through the map later, um, but it can be itself quite a fair, reasonable, reasonably sized thing. Um, something else you'll find in uh, stations, certainly of a larger size, are res uh, railway post office, um, uh, office and off and sort of freight offices, or freight sort of shop, sort of office shops, if you like, for advertising services, um, and obviously the station stores as well. Um, so obviously your station needs resources to provide its service. So obviously you might need supplies of like soap for the uh, toilets, uh, fresh, uh, fresh cloth, you know. Um, obviously you'll need all the clean supplies and that sort of thing so obviously you need somewhere to store all that and that's where the station stores come in um, and obviously you being something as a sort of like the more like maintenance service sort of thing you can have things such as like a loading dock um, and that sort of thing and possibly a bit of small warehousing and again it's another attractive feature especially if you've got to like a loading scene where they're loading cargo on or off a lorry uh, so maybe it's some fresh linen arriving and stuff, or being dispatched and things like that. So it's just a little bit of added interest. Um, and we're actually now going to go through that on um, a software program called Paint.net. So we're going to go through this in a very sort of symbolic, you know, methodical way, the same way we've gone through the station. We're going to start off with the train shed. Now the train shed is obviously the big structure. And in the centre of it is obviously going to be a clock. Um, in in actually inside the station, that's just the locker, sort of like, almost at like the centre point, if you like. The centre point has got a clock in it, like a lot of stations would do. Um, and obviously, as a station, we've got to have platforms. So I'll now enable the platform layer, and then you can sort of see we have uh, the sort of like lines to the north, and you can sort of see we've got uh, four platforms on this plan. And then we've also got a next running line here, possibly for loco running ground, um, possibly as a freight bypass line to stop freight trains and use the platforms, um, or something like that. It could also become another platform if we were to, for example, build something underneath this end of the station um, as a platform and possibly have it have the stairs and ramp actually inbuilt into the station, which might benefit it. As a platform one if it's having express trains or high-end trains as well um, where there'd be a bit more of a sort of like focus on ensuring that it was a good service being maintained um, for the visitors and customers um, obviously going on to the next point we have uh, platforms we also need the clock tower so that again is going to be put in on the passenger side or the public side of things and again it's pretty much opposite the platform sort of access and it's sort of roughly centered in the actual terminal um, sort of like floor plan if you like and going on obviously we will have the offices and ticket spaces and obviously we can add those in now um, and part of the design ethos I want to go for is that these can sort of go into the station building as well because obviously we you know you're trying to make the most out of the space these can go into the station building and then we can also wrap the office and ticket booth section around the edge of the station as well high enough to enable it to be functional but low enough to you know so we've got those nice windows at the end um, and it also means that we can sort of kick some of the features like the ticket. obviously if you're going to have offices in there you want to make the most office space um, so obviously if we encroach into onto the bit of the station a bit can actually put the ticket booths there ticket booths don't need to be too wide um, so we can have those th there and it means then we can uh, free up some more space for offices and again that's possibly what you'd want to build around the side to maximize the office space uh, for that we can now add the freight uh, RPO and commissary section so that is going to be there um, so obviously the primary things you uh, we'd need for here 
are the RPO slash commissary. And the RPO commissary section is essentially sort of like the station services. So we've got the post office, um, and obviously we've got the commissary, which is for the resupplying of trains and the station itself. And part of that is obviously if we're going to have a restaurant, it will be the best thing is to have it next to those uh, stores where all that food and all those supplies are. And having it there, again, keeps every is sort of like keeping the ticket booth this side as well. So you can go and see quite clearly where the restaurant is, where the ticket office is, just by turning your head left and right as you go into the station. And it's very easy to be seen as well. And obviously, again, like the office space uh, to the right-hand end of the picture, we can also add an office to the left-hand side wrapping around the station. And again, this actually might be a bit more worthwhile because you can also have uh, more storage um, for like mini warehousing as well um, around the side as well, just to give, it, give you a bit more storage space. And you can possibly, if you really wanted to, extend that all the way over as well and then you can also have it as serving the tracks as well um, through that extra platform if you were if I was to build it. Now obviously these are all the railroad services if you like. So we've got ticketing, we've got the trains, we've got the rest we've got restaurants and all the servicing for the trains and management. Um, but stations also were a place of commerce as well. So obviously you'll need a few of the bits and pieces in there, and I've selected four to go in. Um, we've got a news agent slash tobacconist, um, which are fairly common in stations. You know, you'll, it's uh, it's unlikely you'll find a station without something of that sort of description. Um, so the news agent serves obviously your magazines and newspapers, as well as tobacco, light snacks, drinks, and a few other bits and pieces as well uh, for the traveller either going to uh, the tra sta trains and going on their way, or possibly coming back and they want uh, some of the latest local news. Uh, papers and that sort of thing. Uh, next to the news zone, still the toilet block, fairly self explanatory. Um, it's easily accessible, it's close to the, it's close to all the amenities if you like, it's opposite restaurant, it is right next to the sort of passenger foot uh, footbridge to the um, platforms, you know, and it's easily seen and it's right on the corner. Um, and obviously, on the opposite side of that, we have the chemist. Um, obviously, so some stations would have a chemist uh, for over-the-counter remedies, um, general health uh, advice as well, and obviously being um, being a chemist, you know you've got that sort of health and safety aspect. So if there are any issues in the station with uh, sort of like a health concern, you got an on on-site chemist that can provide things, um, so you know, like bandages and that sort of thing. And obviously, in the age of steam, um, some stations would also have had some medical staff on. Uh, because of smoke, smuts and eyes and that sort of thing. So obviously that in some respects is a good feature to have and it's sort of fairly logical as well. And also the last thing is obviously a staff room. This is actually larger than the others and it's also a bit out of the way, um, sort of in the corner. And it's just somewhere for the staff to have a rest, maybe a change of clothes, maybe a locker room, maybe some showers would be in here as well. Um, you know, And it's just a little bit in the corner, it's tucked out of the way and it just enables... Um, the station to you know serve everything properly so that's it is in a sense for the design and it's all at the end of the video obviously this is going to be a fairly large structure um and in the current situation i love to build it but it's go it's going to be a very parts intensive it's going to be very big and obviously as an exhibition piece you know which is pretty much what it's designed for you'd obviously have to do it in a piecemeal fashion um, and obviously it's going to be at least several years off, possibly pushing a decade maybe, depending on progress and that sort of thing. Um, so that's it for this video, and obviously you'll see more in the series coming up very soon. So, see you later. Track 1 for the brake glider, calling at Lego City, Lego Town, Paradisa, Port Lego Rito, Park Lake City, Scarlet